for this release, like all releases, we wanted to take it out and showcase it to the people before it came out. We only did a select run of shows and like recently I was looking at my Apple reports. I ain't really done no shows in so long because I've been focusing on the music. I really had a good time in Tassie. It was a massive lineup. My boy Grills hit me up and put me on. Uh, free Grills. We gotta get you home soon, man. I don't want another Christmas card from you, you know what I mean? Now, here is what hip hop is about. So I won't pass through. Before I even start to, it's a shout out to my brother Midas from Newcastle. Hey. Now, I've never been to Tassie, so I wasn't sure what I was in for, but one thing's for sure Tassie gets loose. Whether it be the punters, the performers, or like the absolute tens, they all get loose. One of them might even convince to do a photo shoot. What's crazy about that show is, man, like that was the first one I was testing out some of these new songs, and it all went down perfect, man. Like we had a ball. We didn't really get that much footage. My man Embrace got a couple videos. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Scrub man, he was on that build too, he broke his ankle like, I don't know, like two minutes into his set and still played the entire thing. And for the rest of the night, he was just getting carried around. So I was like, okay guys, I thought I just broke my ankle, but I don't give a fuck, because I'm in Hobart! <laughs> and everyone's like, Whoa! We ended up going to a nightclub uh, with the DJ, Max Best. He um, he took me in, I didn't even have to show no ID, we just, we just went in. Like, if you just tried to duck under the ropes in New South Wales without showing ID, like, that ain't happening, man. Like. Everything about Tassie is casual as, loose as, it's just, I could almost move there, I'm telling you. When we first get there, he, he gives me a couple beers and, um, you know, we go to, to the DJ booth and there's a DJ there who's a fan of mine who caught the seven deadly seven inch release and he's telling me about it he, we, we're talking hip-hop meanwhile we're in the booth just selecting songs to like the people who are drunk as yeah, having shots with the owner like that's the best shit ever I ended up picking up that night and uh, we get back to my hotel room and the key didn't work. So I tried to go around the back, that didn't work. So naturally, what else do you do? You try and climb up on the roof. I, I poked my head into a window and I figured like, this kind of looks like it could be my room. I'm not too sure. I've had a lot to drink by this stage. I'm not condoning climbing on roofs, but that's what I had to do. We get up there and um, I get up there and I poke my head through a little bit and dude comes out, you can't be here, you can't be here. I was like, chill, chill. I'm staying here, my key won't work and I need to get into my room. You performed tonight, didn't you? Yes, I did. You killed it. I'm going to let you in. Thank you. Crazy as shit, man. Only uh, that type of thing could only happen to me. By the time I get around the front, the girl that I picked up is gone. I messaged her the next day, and she thought I ditched her. But you know, it is what it is. We get to the airport, and we put like a toenail through the door, and we get a message saying our flight's cancelled. Now. The official reason we're not sure of, they, they gave us like three different reasons, but from what I'm told by frequent flyers is they probably didn't have the plane fully booked and it cost them less to go this route than actually send a half empty plane. That's kind of fucked up. I'm not going to lie Jetstar. Out of the hundred flights I've had with you, one was bad. So, we're good at this point. Sometimes this shit doesn't go to plan. And, um... 
Sometimes you get a bomb fucking room. But yeah, like it took four hours for them to pick us up from the airport to take us to the emergency accommodation they put us through with. And it was a five-star hotel. Like I cannot complain about that. It was well better than the the room I was staying at above the venue. Fucking nice little shitter. Who's that handsome looking bloke? Flight got delayed, but Jetstar put us up in a quite a decent little hotel. But now, it's time for bed. But yeah, like four hours it took us to get there. By the time we get there, we have a meal and everything. We don't get to see another hotel. We go to bed and we're waking up for the first red eye. 10 to fucking 6 or some bullshit. I set an alarm at 5.45. And yeah, we're about to get our transfer by some finally late taxi. Goodbye. Nice little room and shit. I'm make my bed. Fuck that. And then they don't send a, a shuttle bus to pick us up for said flight. So we don't get breakfast, we don't do all this. They told us we had to be ready two hours earlier for the flight. And man, like, by the time I, I got home, I, I just wanted to, yeah. I ended up having to catch public transport for the first time in like, I don't know, 10 years. Delayed cancel flight and now delayed exit. Love, love Tazzy though. Yeah, man, uh, Tazzy was good. Tazzy was good. But we got Tazzy didn't want to let us go, so we got one more night, which is Tazzy loved it. Tazzy so loved us too much. But it's all changed now. I could just sit there and watch Netflix, and by the time like my movie was done, I was home, <laughs> so it wasn't that bad. We did a couple in Newcastle. Um, one of them we got hit up by an alternative hip hop band called The Proxy. They put us on, shout outs to The Proxy. Um, that was at Hamilton Station Hotel. That was pretty dope, we had a bit of fun. We also played a couple of youth events. Uh, I love doing them because it showcases to a different crowd and the kids are always that much more appreciative. They're not as jaded as adult fans, I find. We also played an art exhibition uh, version of Madhouse. Um, it was the first time me and Zach were able to play our song, Lose Your Mind, of which features complete and we got the video with. Um, but we blew up the system with that. What the fuck? We fried a power board apparently, and um, there, the venue's sound system wasn't set up for gigs. So when you got music and then going to output, then you got an input running through the same channel and then you got two mics going at the same time. Anytime I rapped, his mic would cut out and vice versa. So by the end of it, the power board just went Pfft. and we just smelled this burning smell and then all of a sudden there was no music. So yeah, that track literally blew up the system. That's how fire that shit is. <laughs> we also did Chippo Hotel. Uh, Chippo Hotel was with Bomb Threat, shout outs to Bomb Threat putting us on. That was a crazy, crazy gig, uh, lots of love. I'm, I'm fortunate I fall in this like category of like, you know, the young kids mess with me, the older heads mess with me. Because of my age, I kind of sit in that middle. You know, I was lucky enough to have um, Sir Wreck of Death Wish Cast in, in the front row checking me out and gave me props on my set. And you know, like without without Death Wish Cars, there wouldn't be a me, you know. Same with Bias and Tram, them both those guys gave me mad props when I was in Melbourne one time doing a show and you know if I never put out an album, that's all I need. Like three of kings in this in this hip hop shit in this country. What more do you want? The wild Zacky P. Is that a wardrobe? Is that considered a wardrobe? He's a wild Zachy P. <laughs> <laughs> we end up staying down there and look, I don't remember too much of what happened that night. 
you'll have to take that up with Drunk Midas. But um, yeah, here's a little bit. I'm just gonna run in there while he's pissing. Wait, he's in the fucking bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> what? Wait, that went in the toilet, I think. No, I just missed that. Wait, we got droplets on the thing. How are you that wet? Did you actually shower yourself? I put the shower on a bit. It come. Oh, watch out, stop chat. We coming, boy. So the night before we went down, I had Chinese and they gave me like this big bag of prawn chips and I figured, you know, I'll take them down and we got some things for snacks while we're down there. And I don't even remember. There's prawn chips throughout that whole hotel room. This is the documentation of the night before. That is prawn chips. There's prawn chips fucking everywhere, including on the bed. <laughs> this bed right here. <laughs> Is mad skew if it's like on the fucking angle. I don't even know how that shit happened. You see that shit? It's like full angled out that way. ZP may or may not be alive. Oh, We're not sure it. yet. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what the boys got up to. <laughs> it could have been me. I don't know. The cups we stole from the pub. Oi, the iron's sweet though. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Oi, where'd it go? Where the fucking where the hair dryer go? I'm pretty sure that's where we pulled up, eh? Let's just see. What's what's the sun looking like? Is it sunny? Dear God, man, it's bright. <laughs> There's a cable car outside. <laughs> There's a bunch of tracks that we tested out on these little sporadic kind of shows. Uh, then there's a bunch of tracks from this release that we didn't try. Get the fuck out of my face. That's one that, you know, that's one we're really gonna have to rehearse and be on our game for because that, that could be, you know, quite a pivotal moment in a show with that amount of energy and everything. And I can't wait to take it live on tour, but we gotta make sure we know that in and out. And, you know, we got that down because that'll, that'll, bring some heads and as soon as the project's out we'll be touring extensively because I, I love it man it's the best it's the most pure form of entertainment I feel and it's the best way to um, put your music across to a new potential fan it's also you know the mark of a, a true performer if you can't lay down a proper live set what's what's the point So it was actually like when I first pulled up to Tassie, I pulled out a phone to take a photo of like the airport and this like Asian guy must have thought I was taking a photo of him and he was a lovely looking Asian gentleman, you know, um, but he just stood there posing for this photo, <laughs> like, but I'm trying to do like the socials and all that. So then like when um, me and Embrace were like leaving, um, <laughs> we reenacted that and then we put it as a poll on uh, you know lunchtime polls and unfortunately embrace you didn't win the lovely Asian Asian gentleman the OG of the out front of Tassie post pose he won <laughs>